so that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. It's a very short verse, but it is a verse that is telling us of the psalmist's desire for what we should be doing in our lives. And he says, all that men would praise the Lord. And I thought this is a very appropriate text to share as we talk about nutrition and our bodies, because so many times when we talk about nutrition and our bodies, it is within the context of this is what is wrong. This is what I am unhappy about. And I am here to find ways of undoing the bad habits, learning new habits, and then living a more healthy life. But today I just want us to focus on praising the Lord for these bodies that he gave us. The human body is an amazing machine. It is a a body that is self-contained in terms of ability to heal itself, ability to regenerate, ability to recover, ability to fight off disease. It, It is just amazing. And therefore, we need to praise the Lord for our bodies. Yes, they may be out of work, but still we have sufficient reason to praise him because he has been good to us. Uh, But he's also been good to us in that he has given us knowledge that if we learned and applied, our bodies would perform optimally. And I guess this is what brings us to these kind of meetings where our desire is to learn and acquire knowledge that will help us to see that goodness of the Lord as we begin to give our bodies the right nutrients, the right micronutrients, macronutrients for it to perform optimally. And so my prayer is that all of us will this week make a conscious choice to praise the Lord for our bodies. Look at the eye and praise the Lord for the intricate details that he put in making the eye. Look at the ear, look whatever part of the body that you want to focus on on each day. Let us praise the Lord because like the psalmist David says, we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our most gracious and loving heavenly father who dwells in the highest of heaven, but who is also here down with us, through the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you and praise you for these bodies that you gave us. We praise you specifically, Lord, for your grace, in that we have caused untold damage to these bodies, knowingly and unknowingly. And yet you have been gracious enough to enable us to continue being counted amongst the living. And we praise you, Lord, that you have also brought us to a knowledge of how you would have us take care of our bodies. And now as we continue to deepen our knowledge and understanding, how I pray that God, the Holy Spirit will prompt us, he will guide us and instruct us in the application of this knowledge so that indeed these bodies may be presented to you as an offering that is sweet, an offering that is acceptable, and that they may then be bodies that will house minds that can work for you, bodies that will enable us to run swiftly to fulfill the the, the mission of spreading the gospel that you left with us. Now, as we begin this class, I pray that you will be with us, be our teacher, be our master, and help us to apply everything that we will learn today. We ask all this and for everything else through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our King. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So today, to start off, we know that this week we are focusing on detoxification. We are going to be starting on a detox program that will help us detoxify our bodies. Now, the first question that we then ask is, what is this detoxification, what does it mean to to detox? And and why should we detox? And what are some of the things that we should be mindful of 
as we detoxify. So I'm going to spend the next uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so leading a conversation on detoxification. So to start off with, I'm going to ask you a question. What is your understanding of detoxification? What does it mean when we say that we are detoxifying? What are we actually doing? You can just mute, unmute yourselves and respond. Uh, to me, my understanding is cleansing our body. You know, uh, that's my understanding of what detox is. Is on cleansing the system. You know, like the organs, or it might be cleansing all the organs, or focusing on a particular organs. Mm -hmm. So it is cleansing the system largely. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else with um, a different definition? It helps us to remove toxic in our body. It helps us to? To remove toxin in our body. Mm -hmm. It helps us to remove the toxins that are often found in, in or exist in our bodies. Priscilla, do you have a definition, your understanding that you would like to share with us? <laughs> okay, so I think, okay, and uh, to help our body to regain, to regain and uh, his uh, original strength that we had when we are young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, with age, we are exposed to the other toxins and usually, and naturally we degenerate and we lose our energy and all, you know. Therefore, mm -hmm. try to regain back your original vigor and strength, mm -hmm. physically, mentally. Okay, so let's now combine the three definitions. Christine talked about cleansing the system. She said that you can focus on cleansing a particular part of the body or particular parts of a body at any one given time, but it is about uh, cleansing. And then um, Manis talked about removing, it is a process of removing toxins from our body. So we are cleansing, but what are we cleansing? We are cleansing our bodies of the toxins that have built up over a particular period of time. And then uh, Priscilla, is talking about the result of, of a detoxification process, which is regeneration, recalibration, and therefore enabling our bodies to, to operate optimally. And, and all of you are actually right. You have touched on the different aspects of what detoxification is. But it is really about consciously assisting the body to be able to eliminate the toxic buildup in our bodies. And, and that is what we are doing when we are detoxifying. Um, now, the next question you may ask is, why is it important to detoxify? Can anybody answer that question for us? Why is detoxification important? Because of this accumulation of toxins, we are sick. We mm -hmm. are sick, we are diseased. And we can't mm -hmm. be able to optimally function the way you are supposed to function. So it's necessary to Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. any, any other comment? Why should we detoxify periodically? Why should we detoxify what? Why should we detoxify periodically? I think it's to maintain the function of the body because we know that we live in a world which is very polluted. And sometimes we think we are well and everything is fine, but that we have toxin in our body. And if we do it um, periodically, they will take those toxins out from our body and to make us feel well and increase our energy as well. And, mm -hmm. to prevent, and to prevent us from getting other diseases. Absolutely. So the primary reason why we need to detoxify is we need to assist the body to be able to flush out this toxin buildup that comes as a result of our lifestyles and the environment that we live in. 
at times it is necessary to detoxify because we actually know that we have a disease that exists within our bodies, which we need to then try and reverse um, through the process of recalibrating the body and enabling it to then uh, perform optimally. Um, some of the challenges that we face today, which lead us to uh, have need for, for detoxification is that the food we eat is largely contaminated, especially those of us who don't eat what we grow exclusively. So if you go to a supermarket to buy any of the foodstuffs that you eat, you know that more often than not, you're buying contaminated food. Now I hear people saying, oh, but I shop at an organic market, so I'm pretty much safe. But if you are buying exotic fruit that is not in season in that particular country that you live in or locality that you live in, guess what? That organic food was transported to get to you. And in that transportation process, there is bound to have been some contamination as well. And at times the contamination comes as a result of some of the fruit begins to rot and root. And so mold forms around that food, it contaminates others. And, and, and so contamination happens even when you are thinking that you are eating organically. Also remember, that the soil that that food is grown on could have been contaminated itself. So now there is this great awakening, there is this great drive towards growing organically. But oftentimes these are farms that have practiced conventional agriculture for a while. So the soils may have been contaminated by glyphosate and other weed killers. And we know, for example, that glyphosate is going to be in the soil for a very, very long time to come. Um, so even if you are eating organic food, you may find that the soil or the medium that it is grown on itself is contaminated. Further, the cookware that most of us have been using or are still using is a source of contamination as well. So the aluminum pots that we like cooking in, the Dutch pan, I know in the UK, you know, that uh, aluminum Dutch pan is a, sta a standard piece of equipment in most homes. Mm -hmm. uh, most people from the Caribbean will put oh, yes. their chicken in there. And their curry uh, goat. They will cook their <laughs> curry goat in there, their dumplings in there. Us mm -hmm. from Southern Africa in particular, we like cooking our samp in there. We like cooking our oxtail in there. Uh -huh. And in that process, the, the, the aluminum is leaching into our food. And therefore, the cookware contaminates what we eat. Some of us have um, thought that we have graduated from aluminum. We now cook with um, tefal because, you know, we want to make sure that our grills, even if we're stir frying vegetables, they are not going to stick onto our pans. And we have bought the careful lined cookware. That in and of itself is also harmful. There is some stainless steel cookware that is harmful too. When, for instance, maybe you've burnt something that you've cooked in the stainless steel cookware, and as you scour it and scour it and scour it, eventually you find that that stainless steel coating is removed and what remains is some black uh, spots or some black coating in there. That can also leach into your food. And so it could be the cookware, it could be the cutlery that we use. Because oftentimes we don't talk much about the cutlery that we use, right? So some of us again use aluminum alloy cook, uh, cutlery. Some of us will even use the cast iron cookware and some iron alloy uh, cutlery as well. Now the cast iron cookware, if, if it is not nicely enameled, is still going to leach a lot of iron into your food. And for those of us, I know certainly in, in Southern Africa, the cast iron three-legged pot is something that a lot of rural communities use even up to this day. And a study was done a few, well, maybe 
10, 20 years ago now, where they were looking at iron overload in those communities. And a correlation was made between the extent of the iron overload, especially amongst women and expectant mothers. And they found that the source of this iron overload was the cookware itself, the, 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 the cast iron. So it, it, it is important to recognize that the battle is not just to eat organic. We need to then look at the entire chain of our food, the entire value chain, so to speak, and really make sure that we, we as much as possible, eliminate contaminants in, in, in our food. Then, of course, the water that we drink is contaminated. So a lot of us live in urban cities where we get our water from the water supply company or from the municipality. It is treated with chlorine, it is treated with fluoride and a lot of other chemicals. More often than not, the water is actually recycled water. So it is not pure water to begin with. And then in the treatment process, it is then um, subjected to chemical um, chemicals that are incorporated in it to make it uh, drinkable and um, supposedly clean. The air that we breathe is also contaminated. A lot of us live in urban cities. For instance, those of you who live in London, you know about the famous London smog, right? Um, and you can even see it for yourselves. Around 3 p.m., there is this dark, dark, like, um, thick layer in the sky. And this happens in most uh, metropolitan uh, cities around the world. And even with us who live in, whether you're in the Caribbean or in parts of Africa, if you live in the capital city, guess what? You are also exposed to the same smog from car exhaust fumes, from industry that is polluting the air as they produce whatever it is that they're producing. Um, so the air that we breathe is not pure. And then those of us who live in densely populated towns and cities as well, you will often find that when you drive out of the town to the countryside, you yourself can actually feel that there's a difference in your body. Why? Because the quality of the air is purer. Therefore you have uh, more oxygen coming into your body that has less toxins than the one that you are accustomed to. So even the environment that we live in is also contaminated. I know in some countries, for instance, those who live in um, towns, okay, places, residential places that are close to industrial sites, you will find, for instance, if you live close to a cement making factory, that even the rooftop roof tops of the houses now have acquired a gray color from the residue that comes from the cement factory. The same with all sorts of other heavy industry uh, companies that we, we live close by. So again, the environment itself is, is a source of pollution. Now, our minds and our emotions are also contaminated. A lot of us don't quite believe the relationship between our mental state, our emotional state, and our physical well being. But there is sufficient research and evidence that has been done to actually prove that that is true. So at times, the source of our disease may not necessarily be the external factors, but it may be the internal factors. For instance, we know that if you are highly stressed, chances are that you are tense more often than not. And as you are tense, the body then reads that as you are about to go into a fight, fighting a, a, an external threat, right? And that we know affects the quality of our blood. It affects, it, it increases the acidity of that blood. So that then becomes a source of um, toxins as well. And then our diet. Most of us, even those of us who are plant-based, which is the majority of us, I would imagine, you will find that when we look at the diets that we largely um, enjoy, I can assure you that more than 50% of the time we are eating acidic foods. So we eat a lot of grains, 
We eat a lot of um, things like tofu, we eat processed meat substitutes, and all those are acidic. I love peanuts, and yet I know that peanuts are acidic. Even some of the so-called healthy nuts lean more towards acidic nuts than they do towards alkaline producing uh, effect when we then eat, um, we eat them. We also like eating a lot of pastries as, as part of our diet. And here I, I am guilty as well because I love all things desserts. And so the flowers that we use, if they are wheat derived, even if it's spelt and all these other flowers, grain derived largely pushes us more towards a, an acidic state than an alkaline state. So we, we, we therefore, because of all these reasons that I have mentioned, we really need to recognize that our bodies will end up with a lot of toxins in them. Further, the medicines that we take are contaminated. And a lot of people who are above 40, 45 may have been uh, forced to take uh, medication to deal with things like hypertension or diabetes. And now you, you struggle to come off that medication. And yet that medication is also contributing to toxins in your body. And then our personal care products are contaminated as well. The shampoos that we use, the toothpaste, the lotions that we love, the perfumes that we love are contaminated with toxins that when they get into the, our bodies, then create um, a state of acidity in our bodies. So, um, Maybe let me just invite comments, questions before we move on. Any comments or questions? I know I am talking to highly experienced people here, so um, I'm sure you have something to say. Hello, people. Are Actually, you there? yes. Yeah, we're working. What, what, what you said is exactly correct. But the thing is that you know, we don't practice them. And also, not exactly. only practice, we need some uh, motivation like with the lectures and uh, some motivation, some people, groups mm. like, you know, come together and do it. And uh, mm -hmm. it will be very helpful like this. They're perfectly Absolutely. correct. I, I, I mm -hmm. agree with everything. Mm -hmm. Someone else wanted to say something? No, I was saying I'm hearing you. Who is that who's saying she's hearing me? Sorry, that's Davina. <laughs> <laughs> you sound different. I had a guinea pig in my mouth. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, so, so yeah, it's as, as you rightfully say, Priscilla, we know these things, but it is practicing them and making them part of our lifestyle that is our biggest challenge. So the next question is, how do you know you need to de detoxify? What are some of the indicators that your body will give you to show you that you need to pay attention? I'll just mention a few and a basic Google search will give you a whole list, right? So sometimes people have unexplained fatigue. All of a sudden you have low energy, you have brain fog, you are not as motivated to work at the same rate as you are accustomed to working. Sometimes it is uh, poor, gastrointestinal elimination. So you find that suddenly, whereas you were very regular, you were going after every meal, you had a bowel movement, there's a change in that. Um, and maybe sometimes you are now experiencing quite a lot of bloating or you are passing gas, almost every 10 minutes you are passing gas. It is telling you that there's something wrong with your system. And then at times you can have blemishes or breakouts that you can't explain. So at times people will have breakouts on their back or on their arms or some rashes and then allergies as well. So a perfectly healthy person will all of a sudden start feeling very, um, what's the word, blocked, right? So you have an increase in mucus and you're wondering why, 
or you start sneezing a lot, um, mm-hmm. your body is telling you to pay attention to it. You may have exposed it to a high dose of, of toxins that now it is trying to eliminate, especially with blockage. A lot of us, when we, we feel that we have a nose block or we have a lot of mucus, we want to suppress that mucus. Whereas actually the body is saying, hey, we need to get rid of the stuff. And as we get rid of it, that is when we are also eliminating those toxins. Um, so you may also have signs of, pure, of poor immunity, like repeated infections. So in winter, if you find that you are catching a cold, every month you have a cold, it is telling you that your immune system is compromised and you need to do something about it. At times, people have bags under their eyes or their eyes become puffy. Again, that is an indicator that you need to to detoxify. Um, And then it could also be things like just um, attention deficiency out of the blue. You can't concentrate as you used to. You you are also very irritable, um, unlike what you used to be before. And this is very true for us as women who are pre-monopause or going through monopause as well. You know, these frequent mood swings that people have where you find that, no, but this person is behaving out of character or you yourself can tell that you are behaving out of character. It is an indicator that your body is out of balance and you need to detoxify. Um, Sometimes it can be uh, you know, mild depression, you're feeling sorry for yourself, you have lost that vibrancy, that joie de vivre that you had. And so you must then say to yourself, there is something that is out of alignment within my body. And perhaps it is an opportunity for you to start a detoxification program. Now, Christine did mention earlier that um, as we talk about detoxification, it is really a process of cleansing the body or parts of the body. Now, we know that naturally the body has what are called elimination channels or parts of the body that assist the body in eliminating the toxins that out of the body. So there is a debate. Some will talk about five elimination channels Some will talk about six, some will talk about seven. But I am just going to mention today six of them, which are areas that we need to pay attention to if we are really looking at holistic detoxification. Now, the first one is the obvious one, and this is the largest one, which is the skin. Okay, so the skin, we all know basic biology, our skin has pores, right? And it is through those pores that we sweat. And as we sweat, we are eliminating uh, toxins out of our body. Now, it is therefore important that you you, you, you appreciate that if your pores are clogged, that channel of elimination is going to be compromised. And this is why I'm saying that our personal care products matter in this process, because the skin is the largest organ of elimination in our bodies. We tend to use a lot of antiperspirant deodorants, right? Because we don't want you know, sweat to be oozing out of us during the day, it makes us uncomfortable. But let us recognize that God intended sweat to come out as part of um, elimination. It is not a sign of you not being sophisticated to sweat. All of us need to sweat. And we should also strive to clean our bodies, scrub them so that our pores are always open and um, enable us to to, to function uh, properly. The the second channel of elimination is the colon, right? And this one largely cleans out fecal matter that is coming out as a result of the digestive process. But it is through the colon that we also get rid of parasites and bacteria that may have been um, 
existing in our bodies. So for instance, the detox that we are going to do here, the first one is that evacuation nut. And the evacuation nut specifically focuses on cleaning, sweeping that colon clean. Because again, if our digestive system is not working optimally, it becomes, the colon then becomes breeding ground for a lot of bacteria, which then breeds fungus, which then complicates our lives and brings in uh, mold and the carbon cycle then kicks in and a lot of diseases um, you know, come as a result of that. So it is important therefore to ensure that we keep our colons working optimally. What it also means is that let us eat foods that will aid the colon to work efficiently. Incorporate a lot of fiber in your food. Make sure that your food combining is correct so that you don't overload the colon and end up with a lot of um, fermentation taking place in your stomach, which leads to a lot of bloating and gassing and, and, and all these other negative um, effects. The next one is the lymphatic system. Now, the lymphatic system is there to remove toxins that build up in our cells, in our body cells. And which is why, again, now there is a lot of encouragement that as we exercise, let us exercise and focus on stimulating our lymphatic system to operate and work optimally, which is why rebounding is now the exercise of choice because it really does stimulate the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system, as we know, is um, a very, very important um, aspect of the bodily systems that we have. And then the other channel of elimination is our kidneys. And our kidneys, remember, they are the filter. They filter the waste that is in our blood and as the blood is circulating, it passes through the, the kidneys and all this bodily waste is, is, is filtered out. And eventually we pass that out as urine. So again, we need, when we are doing a proper detox, we also need to ensure that we detox our kidneys of the toxic buildup. Now, if you are not drinking adequate water, for example, you're com complicating life for your kidneys. They cannot work efficiently. If you are drinking a lot of um, these sodas and, and fizzy drinks, you're also complicating life for your kidneys. And then the next channel is the liver. Now the liver also breaks down um, poisons. It filters the excess bacteria from the blood. It also filters things like fat, et cetera. And we then need to also make sure that as we detoxify, we also detoxify the liver periodically. And we do know that how we detoxify the liver is by giving it the foods that it loves. So lots of uh, bitter herbs, your, your milk thistle, your golden seal, um, even lemon works wonders in terms of stimulating um, the liver. And, and, and therefore, when we are talking about detoxification, we are saying, yes, you may start by focusing on your colon and clean it out. But if you still have things like fatty liver disease, for example, you, your body is not operating optimally. So it is important, therefore, to Look at your body as an entire system, right? Which needs to be working in tip top condition and needs to be serviced regularly. Each of these channels of elimination needs to be paid attention to. I know a lot of people who will just focus on, uh, you know, doing enemas, 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 but then you ask them, so what skincare do you use? And you find that the skincare that they use is actually doing more harm than good. Um, and, and then you wonder, oh, but I am still diseased. Or people who will say, but I have gone 80% plant-based and yet 
I still suffer from a lot of these lifestyle diseases or conditions that I should not be suffering from. We need to adopt a holistic approach to, to how we, we go about detoxifying. And I have taken more time than I was um, allocated, but I just thought to mention these few things, which basic as they sound, are really areas that we absolutely need to pay attention to. That's fine. First, of all, first of all, listen to your body. Get to know your body. Observe any slight changes in your body and be attuned to it. So for example, if you are someone who, I can't say someone who doesn't often pass gas, right? But suddenly you realize that every 10 minutes you are passing gas, passing, that is out of character. Ask yourself, what is wrong? And begin to investigate. Is it your diet? Are you drinking enough water? What is it in your diet that you have changed or that you have introduced that could be contributing to this? We also need to pay particular attention to even our state of mind and our, our psychological state, our emotional state and guard that very, very jealously. And here, most of us as, as medical missionaries or people who pursue largely a healthy lifestyle, I find that we don't pay as much attention to our psychological, mental, emotional well-being as we should. So we end up working so hard for God or we think we are working so hard for God we get into all sorts of needless fights. I've never seen a group of people that is so territorial as medical missionaries, I am sorry to say. And in the process, you know, we, we end up creating so much tension within ourselves, which tension goes counter to what we are trying to do, which is encourage a healthy lifestyle and us being an example for that healthy lifestyle. So respect those eight laws of health, especially the rest aspect. Some of us have been made to believe that sleeping eight hours is, is, is as good as being a sin. It is not. God designed our bodies to actually benefit from that eight hours of uninterrupted sleep or as most of that eight hours as possible. So we need again to really pay attention to every aspect of our adherence to the eight laws of health. And, and, and to also just realize that sometimes it is about forgiving ourselves for the mistakes that we have made. I, I find people get so worked up about, oh, but you know, I've been Adventist all my life and now I have cancer, God is punishing me. No, no, forgive yourself. God has already forgiven you for those mistakes and then release yourself and start taking the steps towards healing and, and nourishing your body and working with your body to heal itself. Bearing in mind as well that God create, he is the owner and creator of this body. So whatever we do, we do it prayerfully, but we also exercise a lot of faith believing that God will heal. Once we have done our part, he will come in, take over and do the part that he needs to do. And then with the help of the Holy Spirit, we forsake and turn away from these bad habits that have been part of us for 20, 30, however many odd years. So the encouragement therefore is, as we detoxify, let us then endeavor to keep our bodies in a state of balance, right? To make sure that we're leaning more towards an alkaline diet than an acidic diet. And the basic rule is that 80-20 rule. Eat 80% alkaline foods, 20% acidic foods, and you should be good. But don't just limit your um, self to correcting the diet then exercise, so you've attended to the nutrition, exercise. Make sure that your environment is clean. Let's avoid living in dusty homes 
Let us make sure we are out in fresh air as much as possible. Let us trust in God and not ourselves and the knowledge that we have for him to heal us. Let us make sure that we exercise and, and really uh, practice the, all the eight laws of health. And with God on our side, we will be able to enjoy optimal health. So I will stop here unless there are any questions or comments. So how often do we have to go for detox? Okay, now this is a question that um, people ask almost all the time. It, and I would say that it really depends on your state of health. So if you know that largely you are a healthy person, your bodily functions are working optimally, you are getting the right nutrition, you are living in a, an environment that is less contaminated, um, maybe once a year, twice a year. We should also not be too gung-ho and think detoxification is something every month I must detoxify. So get rid of the toxins, reprogram your body correctly, and then sustain and maintain. Um, Davina, I don't know if, if you have any input on that, but I personally would say twice a year is, is more than adequate if you are following you know, the, the eight natural laws of health. But then again, if there's an indicator, as I say, suddenly now you are developing swelling feet or puffy eyes or whatever, then maybe your body is speaking to you and saying detoxify. And remember, it also depends on how long this body has been in this state of um, having yeah. a lot of toxins and, and acidity that will also inform the regularity with which you do it. Some people will then have to do it every quarter. If you've had fatty liver disease for quite a while, for instance, you may then want to um, you know, make sure that perhaps every quarter you are detoxifying the liver and until you get to that state where you now feel that, okay, I now feel that my body is, is in that state of balance. Hello. Thank you. But then, okay, let me also mention this. There are daily practices that we can do that will help us to maintain our body in that state of, of balance, right? So ensuring that, for instance, we are drinking alkaline water, be it through lemon, be it ionized water from the sun, or if you have um, you know, that machine that makes alkaline water, well and good, use that. Ensuring that as we eat our vegetables, we are eating vegetables that come from the family that is likely to lead us more into an alkaline state. Um, we can share those list of vegetables if it's necessary. And, and then just cutting back on things like grains, cut back on grains significantly. Cut back on this tofu that we love so much because tofu, is leaning more towards acidic than it is alkaline. Uh, but as I said, the basic rule, which will just eliminate a lot of stress from your life is 80% alkaline foods, 80% raw foods, 20% the cooked dead stuff, then you are good. Incorporate a lot of microgreens in your food. So focus more on micronutrients. Drink your green juice that you make in the morning. And, and that will also help. In, in, in making sure that you don't then have to detoxify as frequently. Change your cookware. Ensure that your environment is clean. Breathe in fresh air, even at night where possible. Sleep with your windows open. All these things that we read in Ministry of Healing, let us practice them. Bath frequently, scrub your body frequently, use salt scrubs and, you know, so it has to be a comprehensive, holistic approach to keeping our bodies um, well taken care of. Any other questions or comments? Yes, what I experienced a few, a few months ago, um, actually, I don't know 
if it's I I eat the rice. That's the first time I eat the, the there is a black rice. So I tr I tried the rice for the first time, and I felt that I start getting some allergy on my in my body, and I was like, let me because I wasn't sure if it's that because I eat a different thing that day. And I say, let me eat it because that's the um, the stuff that I eat. That's the only thing I did not usually eat the rice. I say, let me try the, eating the rice again the next day to see how my body react to it. And I'm telling you, my body is like all over my face is like as puffy, my eyes, all my body. And I was scared because I never knew. I, and I start Google online when people have a food allergy, how you react. And I see that it's like the same way on my face because I never have any allergy before. And, and I question myself, if it, do I need the detox? That's the reason I don't know. I never know. And I start, I, um, I talked to my doctor. She, she said probably the food allergy and, and she she gave me something to um, tell me something to get the medication, so I start taking it and to stuff to put on my body and everything disappear. But I'm kind of like I don't know if because my body need detox and I wasn't sure what was really happen, if it's the wise or not. Yeah, okay. okay so, so it could have been one or two things. It could have been the rice itself, or mm -hmm. it could have been the fact that the rice was contaminated. So oh, okay. I don't know if black rice is grown naturally in where you live, but if it was imported from the Far East, for example, shipped in a container, sometimes there's molding that takes place in the process, or sometimes where it is stored, you may even get rats mm. and other rodents coming in there and there's fecal matter that is dropping mm. onto mm. the rice. So it mm. could be a combination of things, but I mean, really if you tried it twice really and you came out puffy. Quiet, mute yourself, please. Chances mm. are that it could be a food allergy. Now, do you need to detox? If you were then given conventional medicine, to deal with that food allergy, you may need to detox from that as well. Okay. And because- oh, question. Oh, sorry. Oh, I did call uh, like uh, those people that do the uh, food allergy um, doctors, um, but when I call them, they don't take health insurance, plus it was so expensive. I was like, I do not want it to see a, um, naturopathic doctor, I was going to try to see one, but they cost so much I have to pay on my pocket. I was like, I didn't really want to do that. Yeah, but look, if, if you ate it and then you got that kind of reaction, for me, it's just <laughs> enough that you're probably allergic to it or some something in the black rice that you're allergic to. I don't mm -hmm. know. But I mean, if you feel you, you were puffy, I don't think you really need to go to any doctor to tell you that this is a, an allergic reaction. Yeah. Okay, I will hand you. I just want to, to say, and um, um, sorry, Busi. Yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah. you talked about it and you the fresh air and having a clean environment. That was what I was going to add. But then talking about the black rice, and um, sometimes mm -hmm. maybe, preparation as well you know, of grains you know you soak it long and make sure you mm -hmm. take cook your grains cook them very well you know and they have to get really soft or things like that so sometimes I soak my grains overnight if I have to cook it or maybe soak it maybe four hours or three hours before I cook the grains and cook them in put a lot of water at a very low heat then you know mm -hmm. so it depends maybe you are allergic to it and sometimes maybe the preparation as well so there's a combination there's a lot of combining factors as to why, you know, you had these symptoms, you know, maybe you are allergic, as Lucy has said, something in the rice as well. So um, that's what I just wanted to add. Yeah. Um, Christine, thank you very much for talking about preparation of these grains. Um, One question though. Sorry, can Suppose. I just finish what I'm saying? Okay. Can so, I just finish what I'm saying? Thanks. And it's not just grains, eh? even with beans. I know a lot of people have a problem with beans. 
And when you trace back, you find that the problem lies in the preparation largely, more than the, the, the actual uh, bean itself. So it is a journey that one needs to be willing to take and experiment, test, until you are quite sure that definitely this I am allergic to and I need to eliminate, especially if you can't afford, afford the, the expensive tests. Yes, Priscilla. Um, yes, I'm sorry to interrupt in between. Um, no, it's fine. Okay, now, suppose uh, for a diabetic patient, right? And uh, if the person go want to go for a detox, uh, is he use the tablets or uh, he has to, or the person has to use uh, um, detox, okay, take that detox program along the medication at the same time? Okay, now if I recall, you asked this question last week, right? And I no. think Davina gave. No, I was no, it I not you. No, no, it's not me. Oh, okay, sorry. Someone else asked this question last week, and Davina okay. responded. So I'm going to ask her to respond sorry. as she talks about mm -hmm. this particular detox. But mm -hmm. I like what you have done in raising this question, Priscilla. Is you've you've also touched on something that I hadn't mentioned, right? that there is different ways of detoxifying our body. So there's different, different programs out there. Um, some are nutrition based, some are more uh, cleaning, evacuating the, um, the colon through things okay. like enemas or a colonic, et cetera. Um, so it, I think in this instance, it would really have to be very specific to the, the diabetic patient and what it is that they're trying to accomplish with this de detox. And okay. then a program is designed for them. But Davina will speak to this as well, I know. I mean, she, she is the fundi when it comes to working with um, detoxification in, in people with diabetes in particular. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Davina. Thank you, Busi. Were there any more questions? Or was that the last one? Was somebody trying to say something? Okay. Don't get a sense that someone else had a question. Okay, then that must have been it. All right, thank you very much, Busi. That was very informative. And uh, next week we will get part two because as we can see, Busi presentation can go deep, far and wide. Obviously you can't get everything in, in one lesson. So each week you'll get a little bit of valuable information that you will, you can only gain from it. All right, at this time, I am going to, um, go through your program, the natural antibiotic on your program sheet. Firstly, let me just find out, have you received your detox not? Yes, I have received mine. Christine, you have received yours. Anyone else um, received theirs? I did, I have it. Who's that, Abigail? Yes. Okay, all right. I think you're, all right, that's good. So if it, even if it comes crushed, because I saw in the group where someone said it came crushed, that's fine, you're gonna be eating it. So it has just, it getting crushed with a pulse is just helping you to chew it thoroughly. It's giving you a jump start. <laughs> so no fears. Once we are finished with the lecture today, you can prepare yourself to start your detox program during any time this week. The earlier, the better, because it is after the bowel cleanse, then you do have a seven day um, detox. You do have a seven day detox. So you wanna make sure that you have finished. You, you know, we, we would have hoped to finish the detox completely by the time we have the next class so you can cook and feel comfortable, but we probably won't finish if we didn't start it today, but 
we will still go ahead with our class next week and you should finish, let's say, hopefully by Monday of next week, you should finish the detox. You should be ready to start cooking if you're not ready for Sunday, that is. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And this, this session is aired live on um, YouTube. You can um, get the link and just rewatch it for yourselves a bit later. So I don't know if you have your ingredients today and want to make your natural antibiotic. Yes, I have. Okay, so you could make it now as I go through. So, you know, whatever troubles you have, you can get that resolved right away. Or you could simply make it later on your own. But if you do call me later, I may not be able to answer you because I will be meeting until bedtime. From, from rise to, to rest. All right, so you need about, um, let, first let me tell you a little bit about this antibiotic. And you do have this, this page, but I'll just leave it right here on the eight ingredients. So if you wanna gather the ingredients in the meantime, while I talk about some of the benefits of this natural antibiotic. So firstly, after you take that detox nut, which I spoke to you about last week to tell you what you should expect from it. And afterwards, I'll just run through a few things just in case anyone present here for the first time and may have missed last week. Even though the recording is there, you can go back and watch the recording. But a few of the benefits, once you take the detox nut, this particular nut, um, it's gonna clean your colon, completely flush it, you won't have anything left inside there. Good bacteria, bad bacteria, everything will go. Um, now you will need to rebuild your good bacteria and you wanna prevent the bad bacteria from coming back. <clears throat> this natural antibiotic is gonna help you to do that. And even though the name says antibiotic and you think, okay, it's there to kill bacteria, these ingredients work very well with the body. Right. So what it actually does, it actually works as a prebiotic, as well as a probiotic, as well as an antibiotic. So it does kill your hostile bacteria that you don't need. And it works as a prebiotic by building, feeding your good bacteria. And it works as a probiotic. It has enzymes in it for the gut that works as a probiotic. So it will actually help you to build good bacteria and then it will feed the good bacteria and anything bad there it will kill this is, is going to be the first thing that you take every morning as you wake up and you want to take this about six or a little bit earlier but six o'clock is the time that is recommended but i know sometimes it works schedule and getting your breakfast and everything else in um, if you need to take it 5.30, that's fine. But you take this one first thing. Um, Barbara, that's the little one in the tub that um, you know, I, I, I gave you. That's the natural antibiotic. You take three tablespoons of this first thing in the morning on empty stomach. As you can see, it is made of, and I'm going to tell you a tea that you can make to go along with it or other ingredients that you could put in it, right? Um, which is just ginger nut, ginger not ginger, it's already has ginger, I mean, cardamom and cinnamon. You could put those in it as well, or simply put, just make a tea from cardamom and cinnamon and you can drink it a little bit with it after you've taken your antibiotic, all right? All right, so what you want is a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You want a bulb of garlic and just remove the outer skins. You want a thumb sized piece of ginger and keep the skin on, but give it a good wash. Make sure there's no dirt or anything like that on it. You want two large onions, a red one and a white one. They do have slightly different nutritional um, properties, so they help in different ways. You need a four unwaxed lemons and be sure to make sure those lemons are unwaxed because you don't want to be detoxing your system, having your bowel clean and then putting plastic inside of it. 
four tablespoons of olive oil and make sure it's cold compressed or mechanically extracted. Um, you need a, a thumb sized piece of turmeric. Again, if you're gonna use a fresh turmeric, keep the skin on, but give it a good wash. Um, but you can use a grounded turmeric and you can use about a teaspoon. You need um, to freshly squeeze. This number eight is additional. It's not absolutely necessary. However, you may put all of this in your blender and because of the lemon skin and um, the onions, you may find that your blender begins to choke or it may not blend out smoothly. This is where the additional lemon juice comes in, right? Just to help the blender to move. Mind you, you could use water, but the lemon juice actually gives you more vitamin C. It's um, more antioxidant, plus it tastes better than the plain water. So you can get started with your, with your thing if you wanna do it now. Now, some of the other benefits of your natural antibiotic is it fights inflammation in the body. So it helps the body to lower inflammation. It also helps in lowering your blood pressure. It helps to reduce blood clots. It's a flavonoid. It's rich in vitamin C. I mean, it's rich in flavonoids. It's rich in vitamin C. It helps to actually lower cholesterol, thus um, reducing your risk of certain heart disease. It's rich in fiber, which once we know something is rich in fiber, we know that the gut will actually love it. It's a good nutritional boost um, for the body. It aids in digestion and it protects the body. It's a rich in antioxidants, so it protects the body against free radicals. And these are like your cancer-causing agents. All right, so this is now for your natural antibiotic. And as I was saying, if you want, an additional stuff that you can do is make a tea from cardamom and cinnamon. And if you want to use this liquid to blend these, you could do that. Or you could simply just make that tea every day and drink some of that tea along with the other things that I will mention to you. Now, if you don't get the nut, now if you have IBS or Crohn's disease or some sort of irritable bowel disorder, or you've had an operation maybe in the past couple of years, I, I would not recommend the nut for your gut, right? The nut is pretty aggressive. Um, however, it depends, on, it depends on your level of IBS as well. Then that would actually require an individual chat to find out if you could take the nut for your IBS. But for Crohn's, I would say, don't use the nut, but there are other detox that you can use. So aloe vera is known, it's, it's a well-known um, laxative, right? Aloe vera is a well-known laxative and you could use the aloe vera, the moringa seeds as well, lowers cholesterol, lowers blood pressure, actually boosts the immune system, boosts the energy levels. It also, and it lowers blood sugar. And it also can work as a laxative. It depends on the amount that you take and how you take it. That will make the difference of it working as a laxative. So what you want to do with the aloe vera for to use it as a laxative is you get a nice fresh aloe vera leaf. You wash it. You use a knife slide down the sides to take the spiky bits off. You chop it up. You blend it with a bottle of water. So you could use two aloe vera leaves and you blend it with about a liter of water. You put the juice of about two limes or two lemons in it. And um, you drink that, drink that over two days. Let that finish in two days. Uh, and you take six to eight Moringa seeds day one. And you start that on empty, empty stomach. Right, and uh, you can fast the day when you start this and eat um, just in the evening, have the emergency blood booster, or you can eat but eat um, very light. But it, a fast is actually very good in terms of detox, so you may find that a bit beneficial, and the program may be more effective on a fast. All right, so once you have made your, your natural antibiotic. 
you're going to decant it in a jar and you're going to store it in your fridge. It makes about a kilo of um, ingredients. So a dosage, you can start with three tablespoons of natural antibiotic in the morning. And then in the evenings, about 6.30, 7 p.m., you take another three tablespoons. Yeah, so I will just say that again. So um, in the morning, you take three tablespoons of the natural antibiotic on empty stomach. And then in the evening, last thing, empty stomach, you take three tablespoons of um, the natural antibiotic. Now, if you are on a charcoal detox, which I haven't put anyone on a charcoal detox, so I, I, I won't go into that here. But what do you do now after, after you take this nut and you have your natural antibiotic? If you have an IBS or some gut problem, you also wanna get yourself some slippery M. And you wanna take it, depends on the severity of your problem, you could take it before meals. You could also take it before and after meals, depending on the severity of your problem, all right? Other thing, other- um, Can you repeat, please? Sorry? Can you repeat, please, about uh, uh, charcoal detox because of this stomach problem? You said something other than slippery element all. No, slippery M. Yeah, how to take that one? With what we have to take? Okay, so the slippery M, it would normally have um, recommended on the package when you purchase it, it would normally say how you take it. But you would take about a tablespoon in a glass of water. It doesn't have to be warm water. It can just be room temperature water. You want to mix it in quickly and just drink it quickly before it becomes, it becomes like porridge, like a thick porridge. So you want to drink it down before it becomes like that. You can take it before meals and you can take it after meals, depending on the severity of your IBS. So what does the slippery M do for the gut? It coats the intestine and it helps to minimize the irritation from you know, foods that you have eaten. And it helps to also lower inflammation. It's also very good for things like um, bowel cancer. So for that reason, you're using um, the slippery M. It helps to really soothe the stomach, soothe the colon, soothe the digestive, the entire digestive system. Now, other herbs that are very useful in your detox program is you can get yourself things like your moringa leaf powder. That's you can use as like your multivitamin, your corella and your spirulina. That as well helps, really helps the body to rebuild. So those are herbs that helps the body to repair itself, right? And um, obviously they, those two herbs as well, they also, you know, fight in the removal, helps the body to fight, um, tumors and stuff like that. They're, they're very powerful antioxidants. They're very powerful herbs. Um, you want to get when to take them? Like, when to take them? Karela and spirulina powders. How to take them? It's, you will need to read the sheet. If you okay. read this sheet, you will see stuff like that there. Okay, okay, sure. All right. So other things that... Um, you want to also have as a part of your detox program is some sesame seeds. It's very important. It's super rich in calcium. And when you detox, your, 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 um, your mineral levels sometimes get imbalanced. And uh, the sesame seeds really help with putting that back into balance, especially for ladies. It really helps with our bone support. And it, it supports the heart health. It supports, um, it just supports the entire system. So it's good that you could get your, if you get yourself some um, sesame seeds as well. You want to get something like um, a ginseng because that helps to really reboost the, the energy levels, bring it back up to speed. So if you have a ginseng or you can get some ginseng, 
for ladies, if you can get Dong Kwai, that's a very good um, female ginseng. So that also helps with balancing your hormone. The other ginseng really helps in terms of, obviously both of them help with improving sex drive as well. But um, your ginseng really helps with your energy levels. It also helps with lowering your cholesterol. So it's good to get a um, ginseng. You have some superfoods, some sprouts, right? Some sprouts is something that you could add to your salads during this period. Other herbs that you want to make sure that you're getting in are things like your parsley, your coriander, your onions. Your onions, these are good food to make sure that you're having um, in your detox program. Your dark green leafy vegetables, you wanna make sure that you're getting these in every day in your program. Don't go one day without your dark green leafy vegetables, otherwise your body will feel it, right? You need to make sure you're having a full, so for the seven day detox program, it is seven days of raw, and you just want to make sure that you're having um, a full salad. So don't go skimping on the salad. You're not going on this program on the raw with the intention of, you're not even thinking about weight loss. You're thinking about getting enough um, nutrients in your body. So make sure that you have a, a, a moderate um, size salad. Just that diet alone will help the body to actually um, lose weight right? It will help the body to lose weight. Now, as Busi had mentioned, some of the side effects that you may encounter as you um, go through a detox program, this is nonetheless, you will feel some of them. At times, you'll probably feel weak. You'll probably feel low energy. You will see even, ah, okay. All right. You will see even sometimes you will find your skin may break out. One thing with the detox program is that it gets worse before it gets better. But by week two of the program, you're going to start feeling so good as your body now um, has almost passed through the elimination process and it starts to repair and it starts to sustain and it starts to build. You will feel so much better, so much more energetic. You'll feel cleaner. And obviously we have the group here that... Um, will help you as well. The support, the motivation. Other things that you can, herbs that you can use in your elimination process is Cersei. That also is, so for those in the Caribbean, you can get Cersei. I don't know, as um, Busi said, like your milk thistle is also good. Others who can't get the Cersei, you can get your milk thistle. Um, here in, in the Caribbean, you can get king of the forest. You can get your corn silk. The corn silk, by the way, you can get that anywhere you are. You can get that online. Plus, when you get a fresh corn, you know, the corn that is in the husk and everything, when you peel the trash off, that silky here, that is the corn silk. You can use that to make a tea. You can add that to your, um, your program every day. Your vervain, you can also add a cup of tea twice a day um, from your vervain every day. That you can get as well um, online. So those are some powerful herbs that helps the body with elimination. All right, so once you have made your, you've done your detox knot, you've made your antibiotic and you've started on your program and with a few things that I've just um, also mentioned. Another thing is a mushroom powder or mushroom. If the powder or the mushroom is also very good to add to your um, your program. Now, what else you want to look at now is a few of these guidelines. For seven days, you will have no cooked foods whatsoever. Right? You will have no processed food either. You want to have no hot or cold beverage. And that's because the body will have to actually work to bring either if it's too hot or if it's too cold, the body would have to work to bring them to the correct temperature before it can actually absorb them. You're trying to preserve the body's energy as much as possible so it can use it to heal you rather than focus on digestion and all of that. So you're going on a, it's actually a fasting program that you're on, but you're eating during this time. 
So you want to keep your eating really healthy, really clean um, for this seven days. You're going to mm -hmm. have... Um... Thank you, pardon? Oh, sorry. I was reading number eight. I'm like, huh? <laughs> oh, no sorry, pickles, sorry. no olives. <laughs> That's because um, these are processed. Unless you have got an olive tree, then of course you can have olives off your tree because it's fresh and it, it is in its natural state. But by the time we get that olives in the UK, I forget about even Jamaica. <laughs> by the time we get it here, the person who picked it probably dead or gray. <laughs> All right, so um, you wanna avoid these processed foods. You will find um, that when you, you eat those olives that you buy at the shop, if you should ever misbehave and eat this, you will find that you get gassy. And then you're going to have to work to fix your gut, which has just started healing. So don't go out of line with this program. Stick to it on the straight and narrow way. You will be able to eat olives later on in the program, but just not now. So um, I haven't given you any herbs in your package, but I've just mentioned a few that you can purchase for yourselves um, if you want. There's only one person that had ordered the full package. I'm not even sure who, but um, I've sent, I saw the message in a group. So the full package is sent to them. Now, anybody else who wants the additional, who may want additional herbs, you can get them from me or you can just buy some of those stuff. And I know a lot of you already have a whole cabinet of herbs. So, you know, you probably don't need to buy anything new. You can just go in your cabinet. Please do not have wheat grass. So of all the superfoods, one that I do not want you to have is wheatgrass at this time, because as the name suggests, wheat, it is coming from wheat, okay? So at this time, we want to leave out all wheat products. For those of you who may be, and this is just additional information, for those of you who may be suffering from fibroids and stuff like that, at this time throughout the program, you can... Um, put a bottle of, you can obviously put your castor oil pack and stuff on your, 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 your lower abdomen where the uterus is just like um, a finger thing from the belly button down. And um, that would give you an estimate judgment of where the uterus is. You can use your hot water bottle. There are lots of herbs out there um, for fibroids. And if you have any of them, this is the time that you can take some. If you don't and you need some support to that, you can come to myself at another time, not now, on some of those herbs. Um, so your breakfast, you want to have breakfast. So when you take the antibiotic at 6 o'clock, about 6.30, you want to take your teas. So whatever herbal teas, if I've given you or if you're get, using for yourself, you want to take them at about 6.30. And then about 7 a.m., you want to have your breakfast, right? Freshly made fruit salad. Keep it simple, right? Fruit salad with one lime or lemon. Squeeze it over it. Squeeze the juice over it. That's all you need for your breakfast. And you're going to have, um, you can have one type of fruit or you can have three type of fruits or you could have even more than it. You can have five fruits. It's up to you, but make sure that you're having what is going to fill you up right with your fruit your next meal is going to be about somewhere between two o'clock by two o'clock you want to have your next meal if you have at seven o'clock then six hours after you want to have um your you want to have your five to six hours later you want to have your next meal right so you want to have your next meal will be vegetable salad freshly prepared salads with a variety of vegetables, with the juice from one lemon or lime. And we're just keeping it simple. We do have a salad dressing that is linked below on this, this um, program sheet that is a part of your healing process and it also will help you, you to you know, feel a bit more satiated. So what do you wanna, and by the way, you can have your avocados, um, with breakfast as well as um, with dinner. Try and get in your diet one avocado per day. 
a quarter cup of seeds per day. And then after the seven day detox, try and get a quarter cup of nuts in as well per day. All right. Um, things that you should always try and include in your salad, the softer leaves, more chewable leaves, like your, your lettuce. So go for the darker greener lettuce, like your romaine lettuce or cos, cos lettuce. You know, just go for your lettuce. You have things like rocket leaves, which you can add a handful or a couple of handfuls of rocket leaves to your to your salad. So when you make the lettuce, you want to make that at the base, which we will go through um, a salad PowerPoint, right? So you want to make a salad for dinner and you want to start, make sure you're having some of your softer leaves, right? And then you also want to have some of your herbs like your parsley, your oregano. You definitely want to have your onion, one at least one raw onion per day. And don't count the one that is in the antibiotic, right? But in your salad, you want to make sure between your salad and your salad dressing, you want to make sure you're getting at least one raw onion per day, right? You can throw in some spring onion or some chives as well. Um, you can have your, your others that is going to help your salad to look good and to taste better and to give you some variety and some interest so you can actually enjoy the salad, things like your cucumber. And they, obviously, they're coming with nutritional benefits. Your cucumber, your mixed peppers, your tomatoes, your sugar snap um, bean, um, your corn, as long as um, you know that they're not GMO corns, right? So with corn and uh, soya, they're highly genetically modified. However, it is possible to get corn and soya that is non-GMO. So if you're going to use those, try and find the, the, the better stuff. Because what you also have is most foods on the shop shelf have corn in it, has soya in it. One thing I'm saying, and, and, and most of the times it is a genetically modified stuff that is in both of them. However, if you follow this program, you don't need to stress that much because it does not have much in terms of processed food in this, in this diet right? What would be wonderful is if you're able to eat from your own yard, your own garden, that would be brilliant. You'd see a massive turnaround. But anyway, we, most of us not able to do that, but this will also will make a massive difference. What you also need to do is to wash the fruits and vegetables before you prepare them. Wash them in warm lemon water or lime water. So you get a big bowl, you put your water in it. I mean, you could get some water from your kettle, but if you have hot water that comes from your top, you just use the water that comes from your top. Um, but you squeeze enough lime juice in it and you leave the vegetables in it and all the fruits to just soak a bit. Then you come in, you give them a nice little wash off before you eat them. That will help to get rid of pesticides. I will help to get rid of pesticides. Um, salt water. So yes, I know we've always learned to use salt water, but that doesn't really get rid of pesticides. However, it does get rid of pests if you have organic stuff. Most of the times, the, 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 the ones with pesticides, you don't really find them coming with any pests on them anyway, very rarely. But the salt water helps to get rid of the pests. So if there is like a worm, a slug or so on it, it will kill it and it will actually float to the top. However, if you have high blood pressure, do not wash them in the salt water. Because if you have high blood pressure, you need to be off salt for about a week or two weeks. I did not say forever because you need salt. There's a lot of nutrients that you get from it. Not table salt though, but like your pink Himalayan or your Celtic. I'm talking about your healthier salts. There's a lot of nutrients that you get from them, but for about a week, or two, if you have high blood pressure, you, it's best to stay away from salt for that time and increase your potassium rich food, your magnesium, as well as your calcium rich food, if there is high blood pressure. Um, have a variety of seeds. Um, while you're on the seven day detox program, sorry, but just mark this one. Just hold on the flaxseed until 
but you can use a chia seed, use your pumpkin seed, use your sunflower seed, but hold on the flux seed until week two. All right. So now you have your salad prepared. You're gonna make your homemade salad cream. This salad cream is what you eat in the seven day detox, right? So the, 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 the presentation that I'm gonna do after on salads, that's a life after detox. And clearly it gives you some ideas of salads that you can make now, but you're not gonna make those salad creams that you will learn shortly. This is the one that comes with the program that you should make, right? And that's because your avocado, as, along with your seeds, is gonna replenish and balance out your omegas, right? Gonna give you back your omegas that um, your body probably desperately needs, right? That's gonna support your heart health, uh, support your skin. It's gonna support the entire, um, the, the whole um, system, body systems, right? So one large avocado per day. And as I say, you can use half of this avocado with your breakfast, or if you want to put half on the salad, like nicely cut up or so, and then you use a half in your in your salad dressing, that's fine. Or if you want to get the one in your salad dressing and then eat a piece, it's also okay. But you need to get one avocado in. Um, you, olive oil, it may not, you may not need a quarter cup of olive oil, you will need much less, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, but make sure it's cold pressed or mechanically extracted. Um, one lime, the, the juice from two limes, do one first. And if you need a second one, you add it because you may find it's a bit too tangy, especially if you had already put lime juice on the salad leaves itself when you prepare them, when you cut them up. You need a quarter cup of sunflower seed. Um, you can put a little bit of flax seed, but you could leave out the flax seed for this one, right? Um, oops, sorry, wrong way. But you could replace the flax seed here with your sesame seeds, especially if you have the unhulled sesame seeds, that's the best one. Um, a clove of garlic, a sprig of onion, spring onion, or scallion, if that's what you call it, half of a white onion. And the other half, you can put on your salad. Um, you can use a cup of water if it is needed. You, you don't add the water, don't throw all the ingredients together. So you put everything else in your blender first and you blend. If your blender is choking, you can add a little bit of water if your blender is choking or a little bit of um, plant-based milk if your blender is choking, that is. If it is not choking, you're fine. Because I know some blenders are more powerful um, than some. And now, if you are given like moringa leaf or whatever green stuff, like moringa leaf, corella, spirulina, you can, you take these with your green vegetable salads. So don't take your moringa leaf with your fruits in the morning, no. You take your moringa leaf, your corella, your spirulina, you take these with your green vegetable salad. So you can put it in the salad dressing, the dosage, you can put it in the salad dressing, pending that you eat all your salad dressing and don't leave any for the next day. Um, or you just take it as a little tea and it, uh, or, or if it's tablets, however in form you get it in, you take it half an hour before you have your salad or half an hour after you have your salad, but with a little bit of water because you don't want to dissolve the digestive juices. Please do not take any vinegar internally um, while you're on the program or after the program, vinegar must not be taken internally. It alkalizes the digestive juices. It also makes the blood feverish. All right, you will need your blender, you on a, or a food processor. You can see these bits on it. Water drinking. No, we're gonna just tell you a little bit about water now, but this will be one of the, one of the weeks. We will go into detail into water. Um, two liters of water or more daily. Drink your water between meals. Example, one liter, a glass, 
per hour or a glass at a time. Just what we don't want you to do is, oh, oh, I haven't drank my water all day. And then you take up a bottle and you try to finish that bottle, um, a liter bottle of water in one go. No, a glass at a time or, you know, just, just take your time and get the water throughout the day, balance it out and don't try to, to put any un, unnecessary undue pressure on the kidneys by trying to finish a whole liter in, in one go. You drink your water an hour after meal. Don't start with the water. Don't eat and drink at the same time. And no earlier than give yourself minimum an hour after to start taking any water. And an hour after you don't take a lot, you would take just a little bit. Ideally, you want to wait for about two hours after, right? Last water must be drunk like half an hour before. And the last water must be drunk at 7 p.m. before bedtime. Okay. You don't want to be drinking any water after that because you don't want anything to disrupt your sleep. You don't want to have to get up to go to the toilet. So you drink your last water at 7 p.m. All right. So here are just a few salad recipes and just showing you a few vegetables and stuff like that. These you could look at on your own. So I will take that down. Okay. Now, salad, 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 salad. I had given a document that says health principles. It's in the group. You can read that through. However, each week we will go through that document and you will learn more and more. It will give you more detail than what is actually on the document. But, you know, we can't do everything in one go. It would have been nice to just give you everything today but we can't get everything in one go. So we'll go to the document weekly. Now the fun bit. You don't need to be in your kitchens, but if you have question. your ingredients. Have a oh yeah, sorry, go ahead with the question. Okay, since I work night, so I'm not sure what this, how I'm going to do the detox. Everything pretty much I have to start in the morning. So how can I? What time would I start since I work at night? Um, you work at night. Yes. You, you want to do what? The, the, the detox not? Or are you talking the seven days? The seven days. Well, you've got to try and work that one out with your schedule. Um, you eat your breakfast. I mean, do you eat breakfast? I mean, when do you sleep? Um, I yeah, should... you have life you have life imbalance on the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's really crazy. I'm a lab tech. Ah, oh, right. Okay, all right. You need to open your own lab. Excuse me. You need to open your own lab. Um, that's what I'm trying to uh, start a bit online business because I'm also I I finished the health coach. I'm starting my website. I already have it up. So I would oh, cool. start doing my own business and selling products and stuff like that. Mm. Okay. So you know what we need though? Let me tell you what is needed. Mm -hmm. We would love to have a, a lab tech. So when we, we could actually, I don't know if you could set up a system where we, you could test, do actually, our tests for our patients. I, I, or actually, us. I'm histology. I work with tissue. I, don't lo I do not work with blood. I work in pathology lab. We when after the surgery, they send the, the specimen for us to prepare the slides. So I don't work in the general lab where they like, where they do um, all the other tests with this um, with the blood stuff like that. So the lab have different departments. So okay. I work in pathology where we work with the tissue. All right, cool. Um, yeah. All right. Um, all right, yeah, so you're, you're going to have to try and work that one out because you're supposed to be sleeping at night and when you wake up in the morning, you have your breakfast and then you have your dinner later. So if you're yeah. sleeping in the day... Yes, um, it's, it's really hard. When do you eat breakfast now? I mean... Actually, um, I usually eat breakfast when I get home. So sometimes I, I don't... I see people could eat during the... the um, at night, I can't really eat any heavy stuff at night. Sometimes I bring some snacks. 
and or some food stuff like that but i don't really eat much and that's my problem i do have a lot of problem because of that since i start working night shift because I'm yeah like, yeah, you, you, yeah my 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 first advice to you is you need to run from that job sister otherwise yes. you ain't gonna live to enjoy a penny from it yes you know they're gonna have to use your pension to keep you alive yes True. You're not going to enjoy the benefits of that life. So you need to go firstly on your knees, talk to the Lord and, and, and just trust him and take a leap of faith. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Because, you know, if we go, we go and go against the body system and expect the Lord to bless our efforts. Yes. All right. So we're now on salads. Thank what you're going to eat obviously in the morning you're going to make yourself a nice fruit salad let me see if i can start with a fruit salad first if i find a picture of a nice fruit salad oh boy this is not good it's six o'clock in the morning and i'm looking at this <laughs> <laughs> all right so here goes a nice big fruit salad you can see that size plate Everybody can see that? Yes. Yes. It's a full plate. So when you eat your fruit salad, you must not be left wanting. You must be full. Right? And colors. Colors. You're going to go and, and choose colors. Make sure you're having a nice array of colors in your salad. Here's another fruit salad. Only thing is this salad here, this one that my cursor is on now, it has the nuts and the dried fruits in it. You don't really want to have the dried fruits until the second week. All right. So week one, there is no nuts in the program week one. All right. So even though I'm going to show you recipes that may have nuts, you want to wait until week two to have the nuts. You also, um, I'm, on this salad here, as you can clearly see, the avocado. I've lost my cursor. Yeah, the avocado is in this salad as well. You can see that? Yes. Right. And you can see the little bits of lime um, pulp. So you squeeze your lime over it. Be sure to squeeze it. What else I want to show you about this salad? There is a quite a wide variety in there. Um, you, you don't just eat the fruits that you're familiar with because that's in, you're in England. That's going to be pear and apples and peach and plum. You're not really getting much of a variety there. Go to your agent, go to your supermarkets and go to your agent shops and get a good mix. So here on my plate, I've got peanuts. You see that? And this plate is in England, right? So this is in England. I've got mangosteen. I've got guinea. This cursor. Yeah, so that's a guinea right here. This is a mangosteen here and a mangosteen here as well. Right? So and I've got my avocado, I've got mangoes as well, I've got papaya, um, that look like pineapple at the back there. That looks like pineapple at the back. And then you can see I have my Brazil nuts, and I have my almond nuts, and I have some dried fruits as well. And I have also some banana, uh, not to overlook one of the most common fruits. But you want to use some of these more fibrous fruits that will help to hold you for longer that will help to give you that feeling of satiation because they have a lot of good fats in them and they have carbohydrates in them they're quite fibrous so it help to hold you to keep you going surely you have a little mix because you want to have some of the other types as well. like here we go some grapes you know you're getting a lot of antioxidants from these you're getting your flavonoids and stuff like that All right, so this one you can have now. This is after detox. This is life after detox with a cream, All right? So you can make your cashew cream or your coconut cream. In fact, in fact, if you make the coconut cream, so if you get the fresh coconut, you scoop out the inside and you blend it with hot water. And then obviously you're gonna leave that to come to reasonable temperature you will get a nice coconut cream and you can actually mix it on your salad like this here mix it in your salad it makes it salad really nice 
All right, so there goes um, coconut cream again with your fruits. I'm just going back up now. So that's fruit salad. You want to have a nice fruit salad for breakfast and you want to make sure the salad looks good because it must look appetizing. You want to eat it and you want to enjoy it, all right? Mind you, you can just stand over your kitchen counter and eat the whole fruits. That's, that's also an option. And then you eat the lemon or the lime just like that, like an orange. That's also an option, right? But if you want to make your food look appetizing so you can actually enjoy, so it makes it easier to go through the seven days, I'm going to say take a little time to put some cuts on your things and present them nicely on a plate to yourself. Squeeze your lemon juice over it. All right, so your bazo is one of your very powerful um, sustenance herbs, right? That it really, um, that's a sweet bazo, right? Um, and by the way, you should have maybe a lot of that in Africa for, for those who may be in Africa. You can get it out here in um, Jamaica. I had it growing in my garden, but of course, I watch this thing somewhere, I think on either Facebook or YouTube that you can make some baking soda, water and spray on your plant and um, it will make it grow nicely. And I think I, I did the mixture way too strong. So I sprayed it on my garden and everything went dead, like completely dead. So um, I'm gonna have to replant. Yeah, but if you have basil, you can get this easily in the UK. Um, it will help to sustain the body. It will help with things like, it builds the immune system. So it helps to relieve things like cold, your nervous condition, so um, constipation as well. It helps with um, intestinal, um, like catar. Um, it draws out poison. It also helps to cleanse the womb. I mean, I know none of you are at this stage, but it actually, actually helps to expel things like Plus placenta, your afterbirth, you know, that thing, it helps to push it out. So just making the, the tea, it, it is good to help with um, helping suppress uh, menstruation, stomach cramps, or vomiting. Um, mind you, even things like snake bites and insect bites, you can use it on it. It helps with type two um, diabetes, right? So there you go. Make sure you have some basil in your salad. So when you make your, what they call this now, the, these fruits, your garden, these garden vegetables, when you make your garden vegetable salad like this, you can um, add some basil with it because it really helps to enhance the flavor. When you get up to the age of menopause, etc., as well, grab some fresh mint, Massage leaves, slice them up really thin. So you can see maybe some thin slices in this. Possibilities are there, it could be fresh mint. It could be pop chow as well. But um, fresh mint in a salad like this goes really well. Not only does it enhance the flavor of the salad, but it actually comes with a lot of health benefit, especially when you're going through menopause. All right, so you wanna make something like this. What we've got here, we've got our onion. We've got our cucumber, we've got our tomatoes, we've got, looks like some peppers there, right? Um, so you can, and your red onion, I see red onion and I see white onion and the basil. And um, I can see something looking like, this look like um, pop chow leaf or kalalu leaf. I've got their thinly sliced. Okay, I can see something else as well. I've got the tuna cactus as well in this salad. And that also really helps with um, sorry, I think I just muted myself by accident. That also really helps with your health in terms of fighting inflammation and soothing the and soothing the gut. All right. If you your cayenne pepper, you can sprinkle your cayenne pepper on your salad as well right? You can sprinkle your cayenne pepper on your salad. Um, you can make your homemade black pepper and uh, you know that is just to get the papaya seeds. Give them a good wash when you take the papaya, take them out the papaya, wash them, drain them, put them in your dehydrator, dry them 
and then you put them in your pepper mill and you mix it with the cayenne pepper and you can put that on your salad. So you're gonna get some extra benefits there, right? From um, the, the, the papaya seeds, which will help with, if there are parasites and stuff like that, it will help to get rid of parasites from the gut. By the way, your moringa seed, you can take two in the morning and two in the evening. It helps to keep the bowel going, right? It just may, helps with maintenance. And it also, as I said, blood sugar, cholesterol, it supplies the body with a whole lot of stuff that is um, really good. All right, so we're gonna look at some components of your salad. Um, mixed pieces of food containing a minimum of what, what is a salad, you know? Mixed pieces of food containing a minimum of one raw ingredient. That's what um, the world says, but you cannot have a salad with a minimum of one raw ingredient, unless that must be a green salad with just lettuce. But um, usually serve chilled. You don't necessarily want your salad chilled. You prefer your salad at room temperature, right? And you wanna make your salad dressing as well at room temperature. Ignore this beautiful salad dressing here. This is for week two. So here is the tuna cactus. Uh, you can cut it a little bit nicer than I've cut it. These are quite big and thick, but you could cut it um, in really thin julienne strips and uh, you can make a salad with that. Actually it tastes nice with the lemon, olive oil, and some salt. And obviously you can add a little bit of um, herbs in it. Another powerful herb that you can use for sustenance is um, the fever grass in Jamaica, we call it fever grass in the UK or so. Maybe you, maybe you can get it by as lemon grass, right? That's another very good um, sustenance herb. It actually helps with bacterial infection. You're not going to put it in your salad though. That one you're going to use to make a tea because eat and ringworms and stuff like that. What it's going to do is um, fever, as, as we call it out here in Jamaica, fever grass, but it is the lemon grass, right? Um, it helps also with things like eye inflammation, right? So you use it to make a tea. Um, it helps with burning and blurred vision, um, gas. So you, you can use some fever grass tea. It will help. And clearly, as the name says, if you have fever, you can, you can, um, use it if you have fever it will help to lower the temperature if you have rosemary this is one herb that you don't want to miss as well as the mint i already spoken about the mint and the elder pep i don't know if you have elder pepper there you have elderberry okay but if you're in the caribbean you can have your elder pepper that's a tea you can get in as well um, um i know in africa you have sorrel you know that um, we, most times it's available at Christmas time out here in Jamaica. It may be available. I, I, I don't know when it's available in your country, but I know when I was at Newbold, some of the lecturers from Africa, they were very familiar with sorrel. They use it a lot. In okay, so we, we call it, we call it uh, hibiscus. Ah. Uh, rosella, rosella actually is, is sorrel. Oh, and it's okay. available. You can get it dry as dry uh, leaves now. Perfect. Dry what is um, that? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. You could you could put that in your salads. You could um use it to make a tea, a drink, soups, whatever. But this obviously you're not gonna make any soup, but <laughs> you can make a tea with the sorrel on the seven day detox and have that um in your diet. It's super um popular and rich in antioxidants, right? It has tremendous healing potential. And um, it's one good one to actually have rich in vitamin A, C, even some vitamin Bs and iron, you know, as well as phosphorus and calcium. So have that one. It's um, good for the kidneys, right? The seeds. So if you have the tree, because I know nobody, we just throw away the seeds in Jamaica. Nobody really uses the seeds. But if you have the tree, the seeds are actually good for diuretics, really good um, for the kidneys. Also, um, one of the herbs that you call galactogen that produces help the milk flow, help the milk ducts to open up and to produce milk for the baby. 
yeah, I'm sure you're not into that bit, but that's just additional knowledge right there that you can use to um, help someone else. Now, I don't know if you have the purse lane in your country. Um, what else do they call it? Purse lane, purse lane. P-U-R-S-L-A-N-E. Normally that thing just grow wild outside. In Jamaica here, nobody even eats it, but that is actually a powerful herb for building the body. But if you have nettle, nettle, you have, um, obviously the moringa is also, moringa you can probably get easily online. Um, the and nettle you can find in your backyard, growing wild all over in the UK. Those are powerful um, building herbs that you can um, try and um, get, you know, online and use as a part of your, your, your daily um, routine, right? Purslane just grows wild outside there. I plant my stuff and I look, I see purslane coming up in it and take over the pot. I just eat them as well. I put them in the salad. So a salad like this that I just do from my backyard, except obviously the olives and the sun-dried tomatoes. I just go outside and I pick the tuna. I pick the purslane. I pick the basil. And there's a purslane leaf look like it's right over here, you know, but it's can't really see it. Hopefully at the end, I'll be able to go and pick one for you. They sell it yet, um, Davina Parsley, and I've bought it, you know, in the in the shop. Oh, okay, all right, cool. How about salsa perilla? Is that a a, root, um, a herb that you can buy there as well? I haven't checked. I haven't checked that. I think there's somebody who say, uh, yes, there's a guy who sells them as well in the market. The dry ones in a packet. Yes. So, um, if you can, that would be a good one. All right, so what was I saying about this? A green salad. Okay, so a green salad is a very basic salad. At this time, you don't want any green salad during your seven-day detox, right? You want a full proper salad because a green salad is like a little side, you know, it's not much to it. It's just a base for a salad. You're talking about structure of a salad. You... thought that was my door or something else. So talking about the structure of a salad you want to make sure your salad when you're making them you want to have a nice bed don't know how much of this picture you can see but you can see a little bit of lettuce around here you want to have a nice bed at the bottom of lettuce then you want to make um a filling that can give you some height right so your salad must have some height and you want to make sure your, your food looks good during your seven day detox you can see some colors here so you can see the red onions you can see the corn so this corn now, the fresh whole corn picked from your garden, take it in your kitchen, take the skin off it, or whatever you call it, the husk, take the hair off, and here you can use to make a tea. I'm sure you can even use this, this, this trash as well. I just can't remember what the husk is used for, but the tea is very good for helping to clean the, the kidneys as a, one of your challenge, channel of elimination. Um, and then you're just gonna break that corn in about two or three, so it's manageable. You put it on your cutting board to stand and you slide your knife down the sides and get the corn bits off. You eat it as this is, a raw. You don't need to cook it. It's beautiful, it's perfect. You're gonna, this program has no salt for seven days, right? When you're finished with this program, you're gonna be able to taste the sugar in limes the sugar in lemons, you're going to think, wow, I did not know lemons had so much sugar or didn't know it had sugar, <laughs> right? So you're going to be able to taste the natural flavors in the food that you eat. So it will help you to enjoy your food more. It will develop your taste buds more. It will help you. It's going to really detoxify your body. So people who are like addicted to stuff like maybe coffee, maybe cigarette, maybe drugs. Um, this program really helps them to come off, right? So um, your compost salad, the ingredients are carefully assembled from the ground up. So you have different types of salad structure, right? So you have a compost salad structure. 
where your ingredients are carefully assembled from the ground up with a certain structure in mind. So uh, example, a cob salad, which I will show you a bit later on, or a chef salad, which chef salad, you will be doing a lot of that one um, during your, your, your program. Then you also have what they call an arranged salad, which I think most of you here know an arranged salad. You did like the rainbow salad that we did on the course. That's like an arranged salad. It is artfully arranged and drizzled with vinaigrette rather than a tossed salad, right? Rain. Then you have, uh, ignore this, this rather than a rainbow salad. Or, no, ignore that line about rainbow salad because a rainbow salad is an arranged salad. But the tomato and mozzarella salad is not necessarily, even though it is arranged, it is not an arranged salad. It is called a wedge salad. All right. And I'll show you, you'll see the pictures as we go down. So you will understand more. Then you have a toss salad like this here is a toss salad. Everybody thrown in together um, and mix up with some um, dressing. And also like your ultimate mix salad, which we did on the intermediate course. That's also an, um, a toss salad. Then you have compound salad or also known as bound salad, like your potato salad or your tuna salad, which I don't think any of you on this particular line was in the group that we did the tuna salad. But for this group, we will do tuna salad um, at some point in time in the future, not today. But um, just to say your potato salad or your tuna salad, that's with your bound up by held together by things like your mayonnaise. That's called your bound salad or your compost salad, which I've got one in my fridge to show you that I made for Sabbath. And then the wedge salad we will go to and you will see like your mozzarella and tomato salad is a wedge salad. Some of the key qualities of a salad that really makes it exciting is you want to have the best quality ingredients, right? And you want the ingredients must draw your eyes to them. So when you see the salad leaves, they must look crisp. They must look alive. They must look fresh. You know, they must look be clean. So you want to make sure that they're washed properly and don't wash them in so much hot water that they look like you've just done taking them out of the steamer. No, the water must just be warm. Um, they must look fresh, like you just pick them off the farm, right? So if you know someone with a farm, are you better yet? You grow your own, or if your neighbor grows salad get from them first more than going to the store yeah let the store be your last priority get get from your own garden first or from your neighbor's garden because not only is it fresher but it's probably also highly likely organic you know um it must complement it must have a harmony so it must complement each other um it must be well combined to prevent monotone so don't go have um I think I have a picture on here that's gonna show you a monotone one. You have like a green leaves and then um, some green vegetable cut up on top of it as well. And then everything green are shades of green, right? That's rather monotone are green and then there's some little soft yellow as well. That's a lot of shades of monotone. You wanna have some colors. It, it must, um, don't, don't let your salad be dull because then your body's not going to produce the digestive juices it needs to actually digest that salad properly. And if your food is not digested properly, then you're going to find that you are losing out in terms of the, 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 you won't get the benefit from the food. You won't get all the nutrients that your body could have gained from the food if your body actually produced the right amount of digestive juices. And if you were excited about the food, we must be excited about our food. Right. So if you're stressed or you're on you you think that the food looks unappealing and you're just not um, getting excited for the food, don't eat it because your body is not going to gain anything from it. You're just going to be eating for the toilet and probably cause stomach problems. Um, it must be appealing to the eyes, as I said before, bright colors, use seasonal fruits for your fruit salads and use seasonal vegetables. This way you get the best quality because when the fruit is in season, sometimes you get some amazing one, especially in the peak of the season. It's beautiful. At the end of the season, half the time they're filled with worms and stuff like that. Um, and they don't 
have much flavor. A lot of times at the beginning of the season, they are super sour or just feel like they're not fully developed. To re they haven't reached a stage of maturity. Um, use fresh ingredients, have a vegetable crunch of seeds or nuts, neatly cut or arrange your vegetables, drizzle your dressing, add a spritz or a shine, but with some citrus, citrus improves flavor as well as digestion. Have herbs for added flavor and frame your plate with either your lettuce or some tortilla chip. Well, tortilla chips you can't have now in, in week one, but later on you can have your homemade tortilla chips, right? Um, or some onion crackers. Have height, have width, have a pattern. Use a white plate or a plain plate. You can use a mold as well. So we look at a cob salad that uses a mold. You can use a mold to shape your salad. Doesn't make it interesting. Treat yourself. Remember, there is only one you, right? So half the time we have family, especially we ladies, we have husband. We treat our husbands like king. And then we're cooking and we're eating while we're cooking. And that's mostly our food. And then we spread a lavish table for our husbands. Nothing is wrong with treating your man like a king. That's fine. You know, Sarah called Abraham Lord. Right. But you need to look after you because there's only one you. And if you don't take care of you, you're not going to be around to take care of your family. So during this detox program, I want you to focus on you. Focus on looking after you. So when you make your salad, you're going to make your salad as if you're making it for the Queen of England. And that's because you are royal, right? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are from a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are a daughter of the most high king. So look after yourself, right? Fix your salads up nicely as if you're treating yourself at a restaurant. Now there are four parts to a salad. One, you have the base, um, the part that sits directly on the plate. Um, it is a lining and made up of leaves. For example, your, your lettuce, your iceberg lettuce, your Boston lettuce, or your loose pieces of romaine lettuce. You know, it's a layer of cup shape, iceberg, yeah, pieces of lettuce, Chinese leaf or shredded. You could shred them. You could have them in cup format, um, even your kale. So like your kale, you massage that and stuff first before you cut them up finely and use them in your, in your salad. You have, um, then you have, so you have the base, then you have the body of the salad. What do you have in the body? You have your main contents of the salad, right? So like your cucumba, tomato, sugar snaps, these kind of things make up the main body of the salad. These go now sprops on the top of the base. Then you have the dressing. So it can be creamy, it can be vinaigrette. Or, I mean, we don't use vinegar, so we say lemonarate. All right, so that's our new word that you put in your dictionary as of from today. You save that word, right? Lemonarate or some sort of oil. That's our, our dressing, right, that we put next. And then on top of your dressing, you want to have some sort of um, condiment or accompaniment or garnish. So it must be edible, I must say, right? So you can have some toasted chopped nuts or toasted seeds or slivers of vegetable pieces like a julienne strips of um let's say maybe a little bit of red cabbage that you're going to put on the top just a garnishing or it could be finely chopped herbs it could be some lemons you know the the rind finely chopped or it could be some spring onion um nicely cut and then put maybe in some ice water so it form these nice curls that you would put on the top or in, in, in later on in the news, not this week, you could have some sauteed beans or pieces of homemade cheese or something like that, right? Now, for now, you're not going to use, the only thing you're going to put on top is you can sprinkle your sesame seeds or your some sunflower seeds. That's it. Here are some leaves, right? When you go in your supermarket, look for leaves. Don't just look for the iceberg that everybody knows, right? Look for other leaves like your butter crunch, 
your migonet, your radicchio, you know, your red coral, chicory, watercress, cos, your rocket leaves. Look for different leaves when you go in your supermarket and make your base from a variety of leaves, all right? Now, here we go. This is a green salad. You see how bland that looks? The colors are almost all the same, all right? You don't want to make this for yourself because there's nothing interesting in it. But this is what you call, what is the salad again? It's a Japanese salad. Um, yeah, it's a green papaya salad. That is, right? Just use it as an example of a green salad. But you want to have something more than the basic green salad. Here is just cucumber and green peppers. Very boring. But here you go, a nicely composed salad. I want to see the pictures coming in every day of the salads that you're eating so I can give feedback on the salads, right? So you can improve. Because without feedback, how will you know if you're doing well? So something like this, chef salad here, our composed salad, I want to see coming through. So this is half of your avocado can be used in your dressing. The other half or half, you know, um, can your, your other half can come right here like this. So you want to make a fan or something like that or a rose out of your avocado. This has some sugar snap peas and it has some red onion. It looks like it has some of the radish. You can see right here, there is yellow cherry tomato. There is red cherry tomato. And then if you look over here, you get darker colors, um, you know, so you, you, you can have your dark colors. This has lettuce, by the way, underneath it. It has cucumbers as well. All right, so um, a compost salad has many different components. Um, the ingredients are carefully and conscientiously assembled from the ground up with a certain structure in mind. It can be arranged in a pile or side by side in a plate or a bowl. So the other picture below is also a compost salad, but the, 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 we can't see it very well, but I think I posted it or I will post it in your group. Bean salad, for the time being, you're not gonna have a bean salad until the second week because there's no beans in the first week of the detox. But second week, you can make your bean salad and you can have your base like your lettuce and then you can put a dollop of your bean salad in that lettuce. There are many ways you could do your bean salad, right? And then you have your Mediterranean style salad. What, oh, what is typically known out there as maybe a Buddha bowl. I don't know why it's ever called a Buddha bowl, but I just call it a Mediterranean salad. You just have the things, they're just arranged in, 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 as you can see, they're just arranged on the plate. So you have some chickpeas here, you've got some cucumber here, you've got some peppers here. This looks like some sort of rice and these are peppers again. I mean, this is different type of pepper than this one. And you have some celery and it just goes around, right? So there's a recipe for this, but make sure you're not having anything out of a bottle like these peppers here and nothing that anybody has played around with. You don't want anything that anybody has played around with. That's for the first week. Second week, you can start making your own um, dressings. So you can make your own mustard dressing um, without mustard, by the way. You can get your olives in, whether they be black, whether they be green. That's from the second week. Your tofu items, you know, you start getting your other things in from the second week. Now, how will your second week go? You will have a salad every day. You will start your meals with a salad, a main course size salad, not a side salad, a main course size salad. And then you will eat the dead food. What is a dead food? The dead food is the cooked food, right? So you keep them, you keep it You make sure that you're filling up on the living food and then whatever space you have left, you eat the dead food, right? So you wanna try and 
hit about a 60, 70% mark of raw. So you arrange salad. I mean, you could, this could look a little nicer. Like these could be chopped a little bit smaller, big old piece of carrot there. Um, you could have a row of beetroot that gives a little bit of red inside. Um, but you can make yours as creative as you wish. Um, the cauliflower, is that the green one? The green and broccoli is grated, is blended, goes in the food processor and it goes with maybe the onion and the garlic. That's why you see the color looks a little bit white. The dressing is very simple. It's just olive oil and lime. Um, for most of the dressing, the ones with the like the beetroot and the carrot, olive oil, lime, and a little drops of drop of honey. You can add mixed herb. This here is your wedge salad. So you make like your vegan cheese and you have wedge into each other, a slice of tomato, a slice of cheese, um, some basil leaf. And um, you drizzle your olive oil, or you can do, um, this is another way to do your tomato and mozzarella salad, your homemade mozzarella. These are some bound salads for when you're, anything here, you wanna add them about the third week, bound salads, you wanna add them about the third week, all right? But even when you have these bound salads, you don't have bound salad and then you go and have a plate of spaghetti bolognese as well as bound salad, no. Because as you can see, bound salad, it's typically a cooked salad, right? And it's mostly like from potato, pasta, like a green banana, yam salad. You may have it from your grains, like a quinoa as well. These are our bound salad. So you don't, they, they're quite, Oftentimes um, starchy, so you don't want to have that and then still go back and have um, pasta or some, some starchy cooked food. No. So if you have this bone salad here, you still want to make your green salad to go with it. So you must have a plate of leafy green vegetables every day of the week, every, every week of the year, regardless of whatever else you throw in. So this is a cob salad. Um, this is where you use a mold. So maybe a food ring, right? And you put like a layer of tomato. I mean, you could crush the tomatoes out a little bit. It, you know, you put it at the bottom, then you have some, this looks like, you know, you could have some baby spinach or so, and you cut them up from before, you mix them up with um, some, maybe some cashew cream. Maybe you make some cashew cream or you make some sort of salad dressing that you could mix it up with. And you have your mold, you put the tomatoes in the bottom, you put the lettuce or whatever this is, second. And then let's say you make tuna. So you have your chickpeas, which you would crush and you would make the dressing to go on the chickpeas to bound it up. And um, then you put that as the next layer. You put some slices of avocado on top. And then on top of it, you have maybe some red cabbage that's nicely finely threaded or some celery or parsley or something like that. And that would make you a nice cob salad, right? Which is a kind of bound salad. Then you have your crude egg platter that you can do from week three or so, or week two. And um, I think I will leave this here, but you have lots of other things, mushroom salads, tell you, show you different types of mushroom salads. I think maybe there's some recipes as well. Thai salad, this is just giving us variation, some Thai salad. Uh, pickled vegetable salad, but anything that says pickled after, after a while, not now. And then you have your dessert salads and your fruit salads, which you can see here, which you're gonna have for breakfast, not as dessert. Because one thing you don't wanna do, get this, if you eat your vegetables, your fruit must be before it, all right? Not after fruit salad we've looked at we've looked at this is a world of fruit salad you're not going to make this but you can make something similar to this because this has like all sort of things i think mixed up in it right so you can do your tree tree vegetables with your cream you can do your cashew cream or you can do your coconut cream or even your avocado cream 
here you go as well. Another salad. This can also be set in a glass. Doesn't have to be um, in the pineapple. Can be set in a glass. Here are some different dressings you can go for in the second week. And by the way, the cookbook, I don't know some of you which one cookbook you have, but there is a very updated cookbook um, that has some of these. There's a tofu sauce, fruit salad dressing, variety of salads you can find on Wikipedia. All right. Um, I think this just about takes us to the end of it. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question, Davina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but can we eat cabbage in the first week? Is it, and then the second question is, can we make use like the sesame seed to blend it? It will come out like tiny to like dressing for the first week. Because I have the tiny I bought in the shop, but that is roasted. I know I can have it the first week. So, but can I make my own tiny? That's two questions. The last one is, when is the best time to take the, the nuts for, um, for, for, for the detox? Is it in the morning, in the night? Or the, how six, the, 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 the paper, the detox paper mm -hmm. has a time on it when the nut must be taken. Okay. It's a clock. Six, seven, eight o'clock latest. Otherwise, you're gonna go on too long. Oh, uh, I just have it empty. The little pack that there's no writing. There's nothing that came with it. It was just really. Yeah, there's nothing. I don't know if Abigail had it. I just had just a little what I put on the um on on the group. That's all I had. There's nothing written in it. Nothing. Just a little tiny. Not, I mean, the grain, something grain, tiny, you know, it's kind of even feed. No, not that. I mean, the program sheets in the group. I put the program oh. sheets in the group. Okay, I'll from check. Last week. Okay, I'll check it. Sorry. All right, so here we go. How can I make this thing bigger? Let's see. Too big. All right, so here we go. This is the evacuation, not bubble cleanse with the evacuation, not. So um, it says between six to eight o'clock, chew all the nuts thoroughly and drink half cup of water. After 30 minutes, drink half cup of water. Then after every toilet visit, drink a cup of water. Okay. Um, between four to six o'clock, drink one liter of emergency blood booster, a glass at a time. Drink the other liter same time next day. Um, you, for your, like yourself, proceed and maybe Abigail, you can use coconut water okay. as the water that you drink. Yeah. Afterwards, all right? Coconut water that you drink instead of normal spring water. Okay. And by the way, you just need to buy spring water that you know is surely coming from some mountain. Spring mm -hmm. water coming from up in some mountain is alkaline. And that's what God had designed for us to drink. All right, so this is the, the nut and how you take it and what you do. So day one, it's a fasting day. You're only having the emergency blood booster at the end. You won't think about food because when you take that nut, you mm. won't even remember that you, won't, you could be hungry. That doesn't even cross your mind. Mm. But until about two, four o'clock, you will start feeling hungry. And about four o'clock, you will need food. And their food will be the emergency blood booster, a whole liter. If you feel hungry after that, drink more. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning you start with your antibiotic, then you start with your fruit salad, then you start with your herbs, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, your herbs before your fruit salad, but you start eating day two and you start taking your herbs day two. Um, and you do that for eight days. So when you come the following week, we will go through the next section of the program, which will, you will still start with salads, but you know you will be able to have cooked foods and I will tell you how to incorporate them and we will go into that aspect. And we will be cooking. We will be cooking next week. So we'll be cooking um, fettuccine Alfredo. So see if you can find some fettuccine or pasta, whole wheat pasta. But if you don't want to use a pasta, not whole wheat, sorry, my mistake, some gluten-free pasta, flat pasta, right? Fettuccine is a flat pasta. So if you can find some vegan and gluten-free pasta, you can't find any, but you have yam, 
you have glutinous rice flour, you post in the week what you have, and we will try and, and teach one other item. So we can make something with a glutinous rice flour, or if you have yam, we can make some yam up. So we can make um, like a pasta salad, but it's like a yam salad with the fettuccine pasta sauce. That is it for me, everyone. Any questions? Boosie, are you still there? You didn't answer the cabbage. Now we have cabbage. Oh, the cabbage. Yes, but you would need to massage it because it is pretty hard. Mm. So um, I wouldn't go for cabbage in the first week unless I'm making like... um. So if you have IBS or bowel cancer or Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, you know, these are disorders, high inflammation of the, um, the, the colon. If you have that, then I would make a cabbage juice or a cabbage broth that, I, that would be taken every day. If somebody wants to start with the liver flush first, I. That can also be done, but then that's individual consultation. Davina, can I, can I okay. have a word with you after this? Because I think my program is gonna be different. All right, oh, all right. Yeah. All right, so I you. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's directly after this because I think I think we may have club, Busi. I think we might have club. Um, but do we have club to today, Davina? Well, we were should have had it last week, but we missed it. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. we should do it today. We don't. Okay. Know, we do not advertise. Club is at six. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear what. No, what I'm what saying is that mm -hmm. it is not written in the club group that we have club today. Was it mentioned? I don't think I read it. It wasn't actually. So people may not be prepared. Right? Also, the club starts at 6 UK time, Davina. Okay. All right. Club is 6 UK time. So, yeah. All right. So afterwards, then Christine and afterwards, Priscilla. In a one minute. And, I, uh, I think your presentation earlier, Busi, would work well for the club. Okay, Davina, here, I want to show you my aloe vera here. Okay, uh, let's see what you've got. Here, here. This is uh, one. Perfect, big. So okay. this is one is enough or two enough for me? Pass linga. Say that again? Galum kele linja, amashak, amadichwa. Oh, oh, Mugosi, you need to mute yourself. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, what did you say, Priscilla? No, this is a two of this or one of this? That's a big one. Yeah, it's a, it's a big one. Use, yeah, you're going to use one of that. Okay, one of this, and then you said two lemons or one lemon? You can use two lemons. Use two lemons. Okay. Okay, yeah. now let, let me show you that Moringa cedar. Just for, give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Sister Sherlyn, how are you? I'm going to pause the recording. Here, here. Here, moringa seeds. Here, can you see it? Oh, you've shelled them already. Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. So, so I, I I can start for, from today then. You can right. start from today. So yes. when you when you make the juice, okay. um, don't open the blender right away. Leave it for about ten minutes. Let it settle. Otherwise, it will just start foaming over and just okay. and you will lose all of it. It will just foam over and come over on the on your counter. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Hello, Davina. So for the salads, you're going to post the recipes on the on the group. Um, I'm going to share this PowerPoint with the group. Okay. Anyway, you should have your recipe books. No, we're going to buy, but we're starting the detox this week. So we'll need the recipes anyway. All oh, right. I can pay for Hi, my... Davina. So she she is new. She hasn't done vegan nutrition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, but I thought it was Priscilla talking to me. No, because I see pin. No. All right. <laughs> but Priscilla hasn't done it either. All right. So 
you'll arrange, you'll get the recipe book. Um, but I'm uh, sitting, it. nonetheless, this PowerPoint, I will share with this class. And please, it must not leave this classroom, all right? Or maybe I should charge you for it. And then that way I will probably mm -hmm. have more confidence that it won't leave the classroom. Alternatively, I, I can buy the recipe book from Busi, but um, I can only go to Busi on Tuesday and give oh, you no. the money. Oh, it's an ebook, so you don't have to go to her. No, I'm saying um, when it comes to payment, because I don't think I have money in the card, I have cash. Okay, 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 okay. So maybe I talk to Busi offline and then now we make an mm -hmm. arrangement. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. Um, the five seven days started this week or next week. No, man. If you can it today, you take okay. it. Okay. But for okay. those in the day, I know it's already mid. I don't know what time it is. Nine o'clock, two o'clock. It's already day is already gone for those in the UK. So you take eight, it. It's eight forty one for me a.m. Eight forty one a.m. You can take it now. Okay. Um. I think I have to talk to you offline about the payment and I need to get the 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 copy of the uh, cookbook plus the right. uh, the outline of the courses. All right, the outline of the group, but what do you do for all who need the cookbook, just put your email address in the group. Put what? Email addresses in the group and I will post them out. I will email out the cookbook. Okay. So what about the payment? You say we have to pay with cash app. So I don't know what um, let me see who I'm talking to. Uh Manis. Yeah, I'll talk to you off the record. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But everybody put the email address in the group. And um if you want the cookbook, the cookbook is 25 pounds. Right, so you put your email address in though so you can get it. If you're not able to pay it now, it's fine that you, you pay it, you know, next month or so if that's more convenient for you financially. But you will need the cookbook, so just put an email address in so I can send it to you so you can do your work. Um, that's really one, nice. one more question. Since I want to take the intermediate also, um, you're talking about the full package, uh, so how can I, so I would if you, talk if to you want both of them it's a hundred each no discount because they're normally the intermediate is 150 pounds and I've already discounted it to 100 I don't know, I don't know how much is 150 pound is oh where are you I'm in I'm in US I'm in the US uh so <laughs> about maybe about how are you gonna pay PayPal um, I would pay with cash up. Awesome. I don't know if you have cash up. Let me know how I'm gonna get that with cash up because I'm not in the US, I'm in Jamaica. Oh, you're in Jamaica. So, so I don't I don't really I don't have a account on Palpound, so I probably have to you know. All right, so what we can do is uh, my favorite place that I love to hate, Western Union or MoneyGram. Oh, okay. I use Western Union. It's closer to me. All right. So my favorite place that I love to hate. The queues in Jamaica are almost going to heaven. <laughs> so I, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll work at Western Union with you, but I'm just thinking if there is someone I could just ask to receive it in the state who could then just pay it over to me in PayPal. Okay. Or cash up. I don't have a pay pal. I don't use I don't I don't I don't never open one. I have to open one for my business, but I don't open one yet. but I use the cash up. All right, so just thinking. All right, so with I may give you somebody to and then um they may send it to me via PayPal or yeah, I'll, oh, I could oh, I could send it to you directly by oh anyway oh if if you if, if you're gonna find someone that would be fine. 
Yeah. Uh, let me get back to you. Any more questions from else? Oh, we're still live on YouTube. Well, let me take that off. <laughs>